What was it that um, sort of set you out on a journey of looking for something alternative to what you were doing previously? Uh, Ten years ago, was uh, the inputs were so getting so high, and then we're having such a bad run of years with yield, and uh, we found that we're still putting uh, after 70 kilos of DAPs and high analysis fertilisers on, and still getting only uh, 0.6 tonnes of the hectare because of the, the drought system, and um, so we instead of throwing the hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of superphosphates and fertiliser at the ground and hopefully it rains, I decided to um, go around and do a lot of research and found that um, um, the ground can actually produce its, uh, its own existence because of all the superphosphates and everything we put in the ground previously. So I experimented around and tried for a couple of years of not using anything but I used a lot, bit of SOA to top it up and feed it when it needed it and then I come across um, Australian vermiculture product and uh, we did some plant uh, leaf analysis and sent that off and um, Brandon produced a liquid that I, uh, rather than a uh, compost because of the, the efficiency of putting it out and had huge results on the first year as a trial um, and then we've just gone whole hog and turned over to it putting um, six litres per hectare at the start, um, the first broadleaf spray and then go into and back onto the weaker sand hills where the, where the crops are a little bit um, stressed from the, the, the previous history of um, skeleton weed. So I go back over um, later on at um, tillering stage and then put another extra 10 litres out on, on the sandier country. Because our ground so high in pH that there were, the phosphates were being locked up with calcium and if we put um, fertiliser, superphosphates on at a certain kilos, 60% uh, of it was being locked up and not available to plants. And also the, the uh, heavy metals in them were not letting the phosphates become available to plants. Using Brendan's uh, AV's product, it actually the bacteria and the fungi will uh, help the phosph phosphorus be released in, and be more available to plants. The yields have been staying the same as uh, using superphosphates, but the gross margins are much uh, better with using this system uh, because the, um, with the inputs are so low to produce the same amount of tonnage per hectare of uh, crops. We've heard a lot of other people talk about it being a real leap of faith going from methods that you've used for so long. How did you feel about changing over from traditional methods and um, jumping into the unknown. Yeah, no, I think I, I was definitely all for it. Started trying this and just thought, well, we've got nothing to lose, so let's just go for it. So that's what we did. Probably in the last five years, we've learnt more than um, than we have in the last, you know, 30 years maybe. People have, are interested, so it's, yeah, it's it's good. It's positive, so. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, perhaps not forget everything that you've ever learnt, but, um, you have to go in with an open mind. You have to be prepared to, well, learn new things. Farmers tend to be very set in their, in their ways. I think someone new to biological farming, um, you've, you've got to, you've got to be really open-minded. It's about, you know, not going out and looking at your crop, you know, driving past. It's about getting, getting the shovel out. Yeah, it's about learning what's underground. We first did a trial in 2010 with really positive results. Our yields so far, we've had very little rainfall in the last five years, except 2010 was a reasonable year. Um, but I think we're, you know, with area averages, but slowly we're finding we're getting uh, patches, even last year at harvest, that were not just area averages. They were, you know, double and triple what, what we've ever seen before. So we're hoping those you know, those small areas, the biological um, things are happening under the ground and it's, it's working f for us, basically, which is what we want it to do. So, <laughs> um, so it's, it's steadily getting better, yeah. I, I think the realisation of how much, what the, or how much in the past what we've been throwing the toxic chemicals at the ground and to, just um, not realising what damage it does to, to the... Um, to the bacteria and the fungi under the ground, which makes the things available more available to the plant. We've been throwing um, seed dressings on seed, like a, a triad type seed dressing that 
um, actually designed to kill fungus and bunts and things like that, but it also kills all the good ones as well, and which leads open to diseases that come in more prevalent. <coughs> um, with this system, the biggest thing I've found with any sort of diseases in the ground is it becomes a food source for the bacteria and the fungi so that they actually eat it and that produces more nutrients for the plant. Every farmer knows that every, like every acre of his farm, to, just to fine tune little areas where to improve that little area. Um, uh, just doing little things as well to it to actually get it um, back into full production. And often during the season it'll look quite ordinary and you know sometimes we even question ourselves setting its base under the ground. Sometimes people will come down and look and think well that's that's a pretty ordinary crop. Um, so they, they don't shut off but kind of not you think well it's not working um, but then the results at the end of the season when you you know you've got yields that are as good or better than the area averages well yeah something's working so